Gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. That's right. The Bible doesn't condemn gays. You shouldn't either. Jesus is going to return soon, and we need to think about, are we ready or not? What are we doing, our personal relationship with Jesus? What does Jesus want us to be doing? And what should we be doing? Well, the Bible tells us a few things. is to love God with all your being, all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. So God is making it real easy for us to obey Him. And He makes it real easy to live forever. And that's simply, God told us, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall have eternal life. So it's just a matter of believing in Him and, and what is there to believe about Him? What God said, told us that He was be born by a virgin and then He would live, grow up, start His ministry, and then die on the cross. And his death on the cross, where he shed his blood, because before he got on the cross, he was whipped 40 times uh, with a basically a whip that on the end of it had <coughs> frayed out and had metal on it that can cut you as you're being whipped. And so his, he was really tore up by the time they were finished whipping him. And the Bible tells us that by his stripes we are healed. So be, him being whipped like that is able to get us healed. So this is something you believe. You believe that God sent him, that he is the Son of God, born of a virgin. And then they took him on the cross, nailed him to the cross where he bled some more and then they stuck him in, in the side with a spear and, and then soon after he died so when he died he paid the price for your sins your, you deserve to die but he came to die for you for God first loved you while you were yet a sinner and so he sent Jesus to take your place. Because if you died, you aren't worthy to pay the price for your sins and therefore live. Why well, Jesus is worthy, because he lived without sin, to die and shed his blood. And it paid the price for the world's sin. Previously, God gave Moses the law where people had to obey the law. They had to sacrifice lots and lots of animals to cover the sins of the nation and individuals. And they had to do this pretty much continually. Uh, but it, it wasn't a permanent thing. When Jesus died, he died once and fall for all. His blood not only covered you, it washed you clean. Now this doesn't mean that you're going to instantaneously stop being a sinner. We're born and shortly thereafter we're sinning and we're sinners until we die so just because you you get washed and you and covered you're still a sinner and so you got to there's a lot of changes that takes place because when you accept Jesus Jesus comes inside you and God writes his laws on your heart and you're able to live a very different life than what you lived before. But human beings still have the trouble of that that original sin and that won't be cleaned until we're given a new body that's incorruptible and can live forever. And this is the exciting part. But what a lot of times we have problem with is people is thinking you accept Jesus to avoid the tribulation period because we're taught all the time how terrible that's going to be. There's going to be 
horrible calamities and great wars and all kinds of stuff. But the Bible isn't telling you that you're that getting saved keeps you from the tribulation period because we have 2,000 years of church-wide sin where the church rather do it themselves and they make rules and conditions and and laws church laws that if you don't obey what the church says then you could be kicked out of the church and told you're going to hell basically and in the past they burned you at the stake and they kept killed you in all kinds of different manners and while you're if you're in the church in relatively good standing it's very strict in obeying their rules and today we have a lot of guilt just based on the conditioning that we've had for so long of church rule over people uh, and a vast part of the Christian world was has been ruled over first the Catholics and then when the Protestants gained their power they also turned to this kind of rule of law and heaped on weights uh, and burdens of guilt unto its people. And today, there's not a lot of difference because from the time we're born, we got so many rules and regulations about what's decent, what's not, which is a different thing than which laws are. You know, law might say don't kill somebody, and of course, so does the Bible says don't kill anybody. But the church wants to say, if you live a certain way, then you're in sin. Or there's lots of things that every human does. And that there's general conditioning that says if you do it, then you're going to go to hell. And so we're pretty much all knowing that we do these things. And so we always have to live with, with the concern, uh, does Jesus really love us and forgive us and we're going to go to heaven when he returns. Uh, and because church and Christians have actually persecuted other Christians besides non-believers, <coughs> And these people went to their grave persecuted by their brothers and sisters in Christ. That, and they didn't seem to get answered prayer. Well, God says he will answer prayer. It just might not be on your timetable. And you might, in fact, die before those prayers are answered. But he did set a specific time that he's going to answer the prayers of the saints that has died in in him persecuted by other saints and killed by other saints and so in this time he describes that he's going to send his two witnesses and they're going to be witnessing for 1260 days and they start at the beginning of the tribulation period and the tribulation period is seven years long when the nation of Israel was in Egypt, they were there for 483 years when God gave the rule for the shaking to be 490 years. So there was missing seven years. They, their 490 years were cut short by seven years. But that seven years didn't disappear. It would be fulfilled. And it will be fulfilled in our day. And that will be the last seven years of that 490 years that were to to told about when the nation of Israel had to go and become slaves in Egypt. And so with the this period of time is divided, very clearly divided in the middle of that time that's when Antichrist will reveal himself to the world and call himself God and he'll be sitting in, to the, sitting in the third temple. So these are interesting signs because there is no temple right now and 
if they built a new one, it would be the third temple. And right now, this very moment, they have everything ready to start building that temple. They have all the furniture that goes in it. They're training priests to do the sacrifices of animals. And they got the blueprints and everything to just simply start ordering the supplies to be delivered to the Temple Mount. And more than that, what is actually being done now, and parts of it is completed, is a system of transportation to get millions of Jews around the world to go to the Temple Mount and the New Temple uh, three times a year. And this is estimated to be as many as three million Jews, that this is a lot of people to go on these particular three feast days a year to Jerusalem. And so they need to do it, get a good transportation system. They're working on hotels and other infrastructure of the local transit, but they're also doing a massive transit facility to get an express train to go from Tel Aviv Airport to the front of where the Temple Mount would be, where the entrance would be, to go up to the new temple. And even now, they're actually building a subway-like thing underneath the Temple Mount so that it will come out in front of the temple as part of it infrastructure. You can find this yourself by going online and, and looking for uh, the new rail system they're building. Parts of it's completed, parts are under construction. Probably going to still, still take a couple of more years to finish, but they're building this so we're, we can see these things today happening in fulfillment of Bible prophecy that says there will be a third temple. And Antichrist will sit in that temple. Now the Bible tells us in Daniel uh, that Antichrist has 1290 days. Well if you started that 1290 days at the beginning of the tri trip, there will be 30 days left over uh, or he would he wouldn't there would be 30 days missing he would become way short of the seven years. And so we know Antichrist is at the end of the tribulation because Jesus grabs him and throws him uh, into the lake of fire with his assistant, the false prophet, the false, the second beast. And so this brings him up. And we know the two witnesses start their ministry at the beginning of the tribulation. So what happens is Antichrist as ruler of the world will will overlap the two witnesses ministry by 30 days and the bible tells us that antichrist will kill them so we and they and the two witnesses we know die on their 1260th day of ministry so that means antichrist takes 30 days to kill the two witnesses and this also lets it be fulfilled that anybody that tries to kill them will be killed because fire will come out of their mouth and kill them. And that's the way that people will be killed that try to hurt the two witnesses. Now the two witnesses are going to do much more than wreak havoc on Antichrist because their ministry is to reconcile Christians. And because the Christians have been going astray and believing lots of stuff that are untrue, false doctrines, they believe that they'll all be taken away before the tribulation starts. And uh, they haven't tried to look at or explain how could certain things be and they're not here. They have to be here to have fulfilled, which, which will look like that Antichrist has actually conquered Christians uh, for a time. And Christians, in fact, will will find that they're getting plagues and all kinds of things and the two witnesses are telling things they got to shape out or they're going to ship out. And so the church as a whole is, is learning very quickly to hate the two witnesses and wish them dead 
And here now they're hearing that Antichrist is saying he can kill them. So this is the final straw that gives the church the reason to accept Antichrist as ruler of the world. So they, the, the rest of the world pretty much has already gave them, gave Antichrist their stamp of appeal. And the large segment of the world that hasn't is the Christians. So the Christians, as a church-wide organization, as will give its stamp of approval because Antichrist says he can kill the two witnesses and the church more than ever wants the two witnesses killed because they're causing such problem. And But the two witnesses are doing God's will. Their, their message is to reconcile Christians, to get them off their false, false doctrines and, and get them to obey the command, love your neighbor as yourself, and to love God with all your heart and all your being and all your strength. And a lot of you Christians out there really think that you really, really at least did the first command of, of Jesus, which is love God, which takes care of the first four commands of the Ten Commandments. The love your neighbor as yourself, Christians have a hard time at that. They'll gladly love people that believe their ideals. If you believe like them, then they'll love you. But if you don't, then as far as they're concerned, you're going to hell. And this is what we've seen in the United States so often. Unfortunately, it seemed like so many Christians hang on to policies and beliefs and fight for laws, which is hating your neighbor they, and making sure they go to hell or making sure they know that they're going to go to hell. So they're telling them God hates them and so forth and so on. And Christians do this. And Christians are going to wonder, as, uh, I think it's a book of Maccabees or something that says that, that while Christians are worshiping and praising God and longing and loving the return of Jesus, sudden destruction is going to happen. And they're going to say, why are you going to do that? And he says, I'm punishing you for the sins of past Christians uh, from the day that he rose till today and he says why are you so worried about that I say I'm punishing you for their sin because your sins are worse than their sins were and Christians you got to take note of that that often too often Christians are too busy hating their neighbor this is why we see such a divisions we have the red Christians and the blue Christians and we get lots of images of this you can go online and you can find the red states and the blue states and, and generally speaking you find that red christians mixed in with the uh, red states and they 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 make up a bulk of that and they condemn the blue states christians and the blue state christians are loving their neighbor and Red state Christians think this is immoral in every kind of way to love your neighbor like blue state Christians are. Blue state Christians have a lot of problem too. They're not home free because some of their uh, ideas do defy God in their own way. And these will all come out during the two witnesses. So it doesn't matter if you're blue or red. Generally speaking, Christians are not going to like the two witnesses, and they'll be very happy to have Antichrist step in to kill the two witnesses. But Jesus gives us a lot of help. He makes it simple. God makes it simple to just believe in him, that he died for your sins. And that's the story of Jesus. He died for your sins, to pay the price for your sins. If you just believe that He is the Son of God and that He died for your sins so you don't have to die, then you will be saved. And then part of that also is to, how do you get to know Jesus? Well, there's a couple of ways to get to know Jesus. And the main way is to read the Bible. That's how you get to know Jesus. The other way is, is 
ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and Jesus already came into you, so he's already there in you. So everything that Jesus is, is in you. And when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, your spirit's really released to work in the Spirit of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit to do wonderful miracles and works in the land. And it will give you strength to endure to the end. Because the things that are coming up, you're going to see half the population of the world die before the rapture. And so you're going to need something to help you get through. We just had a little scare not too long ago, a couple of weeks before this program. That missile attack was on Hawaii. It's all, and it, in, the, in that few, half hour to 45 minute time span before they figured out it was human error, and that wasn't a missile attack, our president could have pushed buttons in retaliation. And so we had a very short time. Fortunately, they figured it out, and so no buttons from our side were pushed. Uh, but it sure put the fear in a lot of people's hearts over there in Hawaii. And so we're living in a time that is pretty real. I mean, to actually believe and think. People are wondering, are they about to die? Calling people and saying, you know, what is this? Are we going to die? Thinking that a missile is on the way. Because uh, it wouldn't take much of a missile to destroy all of Hawaii. And so with all the news today, this is something that is very easy to believe. And But there's some things that this is why it's important to read the Bible. Because you can find out. Because before the tribulation happens, there's supposed to be a war in the Middle East. Russia, Iran, Turkey, and several other Middle East countries are going to attack Israel. And until they do, there's not going to be a rapture. So no matter what anybody says, oh, Jesus can come tonight, better get saved. It's not going to happen that way. We're going to see a Middle East war where millions will be killed. And these these people will come down to attack Israel because they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. It will be led by Russia. And as we see now, Turkey is now fully engaged in cooperation and uh, partners with Russia and Iran. So a major part of the Middle East countries that's supposed to be involved are hand in hand now. And they're going to attack, come to attack Israel. But suddenly, they'll all be wiped out. All but one-sixth of them be wiped out. You can read about that in Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 9. And the whole Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells you about this war that's going to take place. And it gives you something of interest there. It tells you that Israel will hire permanent employees to go bury the dead of that war. And it also tells you that it's going to take seven years to burn the weapons of the war. So you got to have Israel actively burning weapons of a war. And when we read anything in the tribulation period, those full seven years, we do not see Israel spending a lot of time burning weapons of a war that was just fought. So this has to be a, a period of seven years that we will see. Once that seven-year period of burning the weapons over, then you can say, yeah, the tribulation can start at any time. So we need to be thinking about these things, that there's more to what the Bible tells us than Jesus can come at any moment. This false doctrine started in 1830 by a woman named, a cultist woman named Margaret, and enhanced by Darby ten years later. But if you don't know Jesus, turn to him and say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, that you sent him to die on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I accept that work on the cross. Forgive me of my sins and come to my life. Now, Jesus will come into your life right then and there, and God will write his laws on your heart at that moment. Now, read the Bible, the King James Bible, all modern versions of Satan counterfeits. That's what I call them. Read the King James Version Bible. And in the book of Acts, it's going to tell you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so ask Jesus, that Jesus is the baptized of the Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You have the initial evidence of speaking a language you didn't learn. And you could talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus just like you talk to people. 
you know, pray, prayer is not necessarily official. Jesus wants you to be his friend, so talk to him like a friend. And then healing is, didn't go away. I told you at the beginning that his stripes are for our healing. When he got whipped, 40 lashes, they were for your healing. If you got a place of pain or sickness, put your hand there right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now, like any ministry, I need help. Please go to my website. Press the GoFundMe button or the Donate button. Give a little, give a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Tune in each time, that, each week, same time you're watching now. I'll be on again. See you then.